Thanks, so, Harold. That's been, uh, was it fifth time or how many times we have joined now? So it's always interesting to find some it's, new topics to talk about. I've, I've lost count, you know, with, uh, and, and same with Bob uh, from Top Core and for OpsLogics, I've lost count. And, and of course, Kevin from uh, Kevin Holman, who I think has been at every single one, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, anyway. <laughs> That's uh, yeah. enough of enough of that. <laughs> no, Kevin. Kevin missed one. That was the only time my session topped his in the uh, poll. <laughs> okay, that's why. Yeah. Well, we don't aim for that <laughs> top the poll, but uh, at least we try to find a new topic to discuss and to explore some new things. And we discussed this a little bit internally, and we thought that we would actually give it a try to explore and give us selves a little bit time to explore you know how can we make use of uh, well everybody's talking about ai in these days so I want to see how can we use github copilot or chat gpt in the the workflows that we have today so that's what this session is about and um, my name is jonas lenson i work here at OpsLogix as a technical business developer and together here with me today i have vincent hey guys Vincent here so before we start the session, of course, we'd just love to make some uh, advertisements for our products. So uh, uh, many of you know that we provide the free ping management pack, but uh, I think that the most popular management pack that we provide today is the VMware management pack. And that we also work together with Harold and Silek to work with in the Northern American part. Um, the newest MP that we have provided is for the Kubernetes, and that's something that we see a lot of traction now these days. More and more people are adopting uh, Kubernetes and also that they want to bring it inside of SCOM. So just uh, mentioning there. We do provide some other products. Um, we have the ServiceNow incident connector, or it's uh, just a connector for ServiceNow because it does other stuff than the incidents, but um, we also have the Teams connector, so you can have bi-directional communication between Teams and SCOM, something that's pretty popular these days to remove all these email notifications to different teams to set it up in, or in, by email and set them up in Teams instead. And of course, we have our loved easy alert that kind of replaces the, uh, the operators. So you can train a model and instead of having the alerts being dispatched to different resolution states. We do provide a service um, that we we kind of lifecycle and manage people's or organizations SCOM. And um, a lot of the work that we do there is within lifecycle management. We help them troubleshoot and upgrade, but mo well, much of the work that we do there is a lot of development. Uh, there's a lot of requests coming in. And this is some of the experience that we want to bring into this session is to actually talk about you know, how can we in our daily work, except from the products, make use of the technologies with ChatGPT and um, also Copilot. So this is the agenda today, just a brief introduction. Um, we're going to talk about the benefits about ChatGPT, GitHub Copilot. Um, Vincent is going to show you how you can actually get started both in Visual Studio Code and in Visual Studio. After that, we will have a quick user story where we try to, like from the beginning when we get a request, how we can benefit from the tools and to um, uh, to actually, you know, evolve the whole thing around developing the solution. And then a quick summary about our stories, how, how we experienced this uh, a little exercise that we did now, and then we will finish off with the Q&A. Right, so uh, for the introduction um, at OpsLogix, we we use actually uh, ChatGPT and Copilot in our daily work. We use it um, both in terms of documentation. We um, use it sometimes for troubleshooting, right, Vincent? Yes, uh, we certainly do. We uh, yeah. actually use it quite a lot already. And uh, ChatGPT, but also more recently, uh, Copilot. And yeah. So um, yeah, uh, not so much in the XML code yet, but uh, in definitely in the C sharp modules we write for our management packs. We use it a lot, uh, as I mentioned, for the service when we have new requirements for monitoring. Sometimes it's a little bit vague about you know what people want to have. So uh, a lot of times we actually sit together with the person who's requesting. Uh, maybe new monitors, etc. to sit and try to develop. Usually it's PowerShell scripts that we try to create together with a client to actually just build a concept on how 
you know, what's what actually is going to be the, key, the, the case of the monitoring. But um, we also want to take the opportunity to actually use this whole session to explore new opportunities. How can we use it? Because we talked about it quite a, quite a lot. You know, maybe we can use it in, in a better way. And we took the this session as an opportunity for ourselves to actually spend some time to explore these things. So you know, we can find some practical use cases and also, of course, share some key findings and insights from the experience or experiment that we did with this. So why would you, you know, look at ChatGPT or GitHub Copilot? So I think, as I mentioned before, to have to sit together with the client and have the power of natural language processing to evolve, you know, together with the client what they are actually requesting is pretty powerful for us because it helps the customer understand a little bit more about what they're needing. Because a lot of times it can just comes out and scream, I, I want a car and you will give them a Ferrari. But they realize that, yeah, but I have four kids, I need to drive them to soccer practice, and you need to you know, ask them questions. And that's the benefit of ChatGPT, that you can actually get more context into that. And so that helps us, together with the client, to actually deliver solutions quicker to them, because they see the outcome of you know, uh, the code or whatever requirement that we're creating. Um, the only thing that we noticed when trying to set this demo out is that we could actually give the same instructions multiple times and we would have different outcomes from the stuff that we work with. So that's also something that's pretty important to understand that even if you have the same prompt, you could get different answer for it, right, Vincent? Yeah, definitely. And that's also the kind of difficult thing when you're trying to do a live demo is that you never really know what you're going to get with ChatGPT or uh, a GitHub Copilot because you might ask the same question, but it might answer you slightly differently. Yeah, so we actually try to to make this type of session a little bit more fluent. We try to do some, not pre-recorded, but we're going through actually uh, some of the parts going to be going through um, the chat history of um, uh, ChatGPT at least, not from the Copilot part. Uh, we're going to uh, show how we, you know, we can use it in the requirement specification, and well, like I mentioned, with creating the scripts. Um, but also, like we said before, we we use it a lot internally at AppsLogix in different ways, and it helps us speed up the delivery and actually deliver more value to our customers uh, customers quickly. So that's why we use it. So um, I would like to ask you, Vincent, if you can just show us and the people joining this session, if you can just demonstrate how to get it up and running. Definitely. So what I'll do is I'll um, install it here on a server I have prepared. Um, we're going to be using this server for a demo, and uh, we're going to be installing a few components on here. Um, we're going to be installing both plugins for Visual Studio 2022 and the plugin for Visual Studio Code. Um, we're going to install one more plugin also, which is the MP Dev uh, Toolkit snippets, which are snippets uh, we created on our website, and uh, you know they're freely available when you want to get them from GitHub. And uh, what this does is when you open a project in uh, Visual Studio 2022, a management packs uh, project, you can just add snippets, which uh, has pre can monitors and discoveries and so forth. So the first thing you need to do, though, when um, you're going to use Copilot in either Visual Studio 2022 or code is create an account. So you can go to uh, github.com features Copilot and you can go, uh, you can click start my free trial so you can create an account. And once you've done that, um, you can get a trial and there are various uh, um, uh, subscriptions you can get and uh, they're here. They're pretty reasonable uh, for now. So once you've done that, once you've got that set up, then you actually go into uh, Visual Studio 2022. We'll start with uh, doing that one. And it takes a little bit to spin up. 
Is 2022 a requirement there, Vincent, for installing the ChatGPT? Or do you know if it works? In yes, uh, it, it is because you need to have it installed with all the latest updates. And uh, if you don't, then it just won't show up in the extensions. So what we're going to do here, and just wait until it's loaded. We have scum people here. They know they know how to wait. Oh, this. <laughs> All right, there we go. So what we'll do is we'll go to uh, extensions, uh, manage extensions. And in our search, we'll look for GitHub Copilot. We'll find it here. And what we'll do is we'll click download. And at which point it'll start downloading. And we get a message that we have to really close Visual Studio for it to install, so we'll do that. And then it'll start installing the uh, add-in. Now I've installed this one already, so uh, we're not going to do that one as well because it takes it uh, a bit longer, as we can see here. And we just have to click modify and it'll start the process. So in the meantime, uh, this will take a while to uh, install. I'll show you how it's done in uh, Visual Studio Code, which is a bit more uh, transparent or which is uh, quicker really. So what we can do here is we can go to the extensions. When we go to the extensions, we can search for it as well. Uh, Copilot. And we have a couple of options here. So we have GitHub Copilot, uh, we have Copilot Chat, and we also have Copilot Labs. Now you might want to install uh, Copilot Labs if you're interested in making use of the latest uh, add-ins and uh, developments. But if you just want kind of a stable version, then you'd be good to go with a Cop or GitHub Copilot. Now the chat is just an extra window uh, in um, Visual Studio Code where you can chat to uh, Copilot. So we'll go ahead and click Install. And what you'll notice is that if you click on Copilot, uh, it'll install at the same time. So it'll take this add in uh, as well. So that's been installed right now. And when we look here, you'll see that it needs an account to be signed in. And we'll sign in with GitHub to use Copilot and we'll be redirected to the website to log in. So we'll do this. And you might need to um, um, consent to some credentials when you're doing this the first time. Obviously, I've done this a couple of times already with my account, so it just wants me to log in. So signing in there and we'll open this. And it's redirecting us and it seems to be happy now with uh, uh with the account so what we can do is we can create a file and see if it actually works so we'll create a new file uh, select the file type we'll do test.html because writing some html with it is pretty easy so press control i to start using uh GitHub Copilot. Well, let's do something useful then. Uh, add a sorted list in HTML. And there we go. It's added a sorted list and it added all the elements and apple, banana, orange, and cherry. Sometimes it drops the cherry. I noticed uh, I've been doing these examples for quite a <laughs> while already. So, uh, but it's just to demonstrate that we have it installed. Yeah. So let's close it's a pretty, this. It's a pretty simple task, right? To have them installed, please, to get started. Yeah, pretty simple. It's just you have to log in, and that's uh, that's the only thing which can be a little bit challenging. Now, okay, so uh, the add-in has installed, so we'll close this and then we'll open uh, Visual Studio 2022 again. Which takes a little bit of time. 
and the process is a little bit different to uh, log into the account there, but we'll uh, we'll just check it. Okay, we'll open an existing uh, project. Some error message which I got before. Sometimes it does display, but all right, we'll continue this, and there we go. So what we'll do is we'll add a new uh, item to the uh, demo management pack which we've created beforehand, and uh, we'll add a. Empty fragments, we'll leave the default name. Wait till that opens up. There we go. And right away, Copilot says, well, you need to log into uh, your GitHub account. So I'll add a GitHub account. Now you might be tempted to sign in here immediately, with the sign in button, but uh, when you're in Visual Studio 2022, all you need to do is click add, add a GitHub account. You'll be redirected again to the web page, but since I already logged into the web page once, um, it already uh, authorized me and authenticated me. So we can go back and close this out, and the co-pilot should be happy about that. So yeah, there we go. Now we can start writing some code if we must. Uh, and a like name. Let's see if it'll give us a suggestion. And there we go. Uh, we can press tab to accept its suggestion, or we can just type over it, but I'll just accept it for now. And we can see that you know we have uh, some actual code, which might not be the correct code, but uh, um, that's uh, that's it for now. Okay, uh, that's it for installing. We have all the components installed, and uh, later on I'll give a demo how you can do some authoring with management packs. Yeah, great. So we'll continue with that afterwards, um, and let's get back to the presentation and. Um, like I said before, we take some um, requests from customers about the things that they want to monitor, and we usually try to uh, understand, you know, the purpose of what they're trying to do, and to, you know, create it as a user story, and to think in the ways what they actually want to, uh, what they want, and not in a technical term. But in this case, what we're going to work with is, as a Windows Server administrator uh, working within operations. Uh, I would like the IT operations to be notified when the Windows Update cache folder uh, reaches a certain limit. And if the limit has been reached, I want them to be able to clean up the folder so new updates can be installed. Uh, and this is, uh, we try to collect them as non technical because we want to be in the situation of them. What are they actually trying to solve? Because um, this helps us as well when trying to communicate with ChatGPT to put the, the context of the script, et cetera. But uh, if we move over to the, well, from the management pack authoring perspective, um, there are some different things that we, we, we try to think beyond the specific user story, because a lot of times we see that there is benefits. You know, we understand what they want to have, uh, and we want to communicate more value, so we can actually say in this case that they just want to look at um, the Windows Update folder. And, from our perspective, we can see, oh yeah, we can create a script that monitors, for example, the size of it. But we could also see that, but you can, in an easy way, you could create a monitor that uh, collects information about, for example, the profiles. If you have a lot of machines with big profiles uh, folders on the servers, you know, we could actually do more stuff. We can look in the temp folders, etc. So we try to look beyond the specific needs to see if we can actually bring more value. And we also want to make the code as efficient as possible. So when we make the uh, conversations with ChatGPT, we want to think that this code should not be specific for this um, uh, particular 
uh, use case, but also make it slim, make it reusable in the code as well. So we can actually begin and uh, see if we can ask chat GPT. And as I mentioned before, we need to give it a little bit of context. And in this case, we want to act as a PowerShell developer, which means that you know it should hopefully return PowerShell code. And we ask it to create a PowerShell function and we tell it to execute locally. We know that it's going to be targeted to SCOM agent and the workflow is going to run locally. So if we don't tell it to run locally, we will probably get some parameters on which machine do you want to run this on, for example. And we can directly, in this case, we can tell it it's not uh, even uh, interesting for us. So this is the text you're going to put into ChatGPT, right? This is the text that I'm going to put into ChatGPT, and I will show an example of this in the output of it. Um, and we want to retrieve the folder, uh, C drive, and software distribution download, and return a string value uh, of warning if it's above 10 gigabytes and a string of critical if it's about around 20. Otherwise, it should be okay. Um, thresholds should be input parameters uh, and it should return the current size. So we can actually uh, make use of that in the alert. So if we get an alert of it, we can actually pull out what's the current size. Um, when you usually create a script, the error handling is maybe not the first thing. You just want the script to run, but in this case, we can actually ask ChatGPT to put the error handling in it. We will also throw in a, a, a timer in it, so it will return how long the script was running. Um, and as the folder could potentially be in different place, we are telling the ChatGPT to add it as an input parameter, and that's also because we could use the same script than for other folders on the machine. So let's take a look at the conversation here with ChatGPT and see how it looks like. So this is the first demo, and this is a conversation that's been saved to save some time for this session as well. So this is exactly the same text that I had in the presentation. And if we pass that on to ChatGPT, we will actually get a PowerShell script. So the first thing we should do is, of course, review it if it looks if it looks like it's going to work. And um, of course, we already did that, and it it looks okay. There is, you know, we'll probably do it a little bit differently if you would create it to SCOM. Maybe you're not returning the critical values; you would actually have SCOM doing the calculations instead inside of the management pack. But for the sake of the demo, we made it this way. So copy the code. We move over to Visual Studio Code, and that's paste in the code and see if we can run it to see if it works. And in this case, we actually see that we will get the execution time. It will return the status of OK and the current folder size. And this is below our threshold. So this should return OK. If something happens within the script, if it goes wrong, it will output in the error details as well. And I also want to touch a little bit about the benefits of um, the copilot here inside of uh, Visual Studio Code. So if you have the script marked here, for example, and you right click on it, you will see here that you have a copilot option. So one of the things that we use a lot is to actually generate the docs. And generate the docs will actually take the function and add on top of the function and explain how the script can be used. It uh, shows some examples and who's created this thing. So we just right click, hit docs, and then we will see the output from it. You hit accept, and at the top you will now see some more information that's really helpful in terms of documenting the, the script that we does. We can, of course, uh, also generate a more readable version of this one. So we right click again. We can hit explain this. And the co-pilot will uh, out some information about how this actually works. This can be useful in uh, putting it into a markdown or any type of documentation that you have. 
Um, we are also, when we're developing, developing our solution, we run through some uh, testing. So what we can do here is to actually generate the tests for Pester, for example, if this is a um, PowerShell test, and it will take the function and it will generate a new file for Pester. So you can run them in pipelines and you can actually see that you're expecting that functions are returning values that is correct for, um, for this, this type of function. So just hit accept and you will see that you will get a new file and you have the, um, the related, uh, you know, how PESTA works like. All right, let's take back a little bit at the conversation. So you will also see here that you can ask ChatGPT to document this thing and output it as markdown. And this would generate the documentation as markdown, for example. So this is also a pretty good case. Um, like I said, talking to clients, trying to understand their needs, trying to convert that into scripts, and then agree on it for the requirement specification is something that has helped us a lot, at least. And now it comes to the more difficult part, and this is something where me and Vincent has been well trying to understand a little bit how we could use ChatGPT to actually create a, a SCOM management pack. And when we actually did the first test, we were a little bit surprised that it actually looked like it was pretty good at it. And um, we later on found out that the stuff that we were creating didn't really work. It uh, had a lot of strange things in it. So we wanted to start to instruct it pretty simple. So we're going to take the same text here and we're going to put it into ChatGPT to see the out, uh, output from that. So I have a different example here and let's go to the top. So in this case, we figured out that to be able to actually have a working uh, management pact to, to play around with, we need to give it like basic instructions to start with. And Hopefully from there, when you see that it's working, you can continue to build on top of this. So the first thing was to actually just create something simple and to create the kind of skeleton for the management pack that we would like to create. So in this case, we're going to create, uh, you're going to act as a SCOM management pack developer. And I want you to create a management pack named something. And I want you to use the ID and the namespace. And that's the same as the name, but with dots inside of it. So that's going to be used as the ID and also as the namespace for the classes. Uh, we want the management pack to be created for SCOM 2016 and later. So that hopefully tells me which references to put in. And we don't want any rules, monitors, or discoveries inside of this management pack. And this is actually what it outputted. It's a pretty simple management pack. And we can just try to see if we can import this stuff into the solution. Just hit save. Hit install. This looks pretty good. I know that uh, me and Vincent had some difficulties with the time for this session, so we wanted to show a lot more, but in general, we saw that we could create like basic things um, for ChatGPT to import these things. But uh, as soon as we moved be beyond the classes and try to create discoveries, uh, try to add pretty simple monitors, like uh, looking for a Windows service, we noticed that it got a little bit tricky, actually. Uh, put a lot of different errors in it, and then it started to rearranging when you took the errors from it and put it in uh, ChatGPT to say that you got an error. It started to rearrange the, the XML pretty much. So I think that, you know, in our terms, we got to work with the, the classes, right? And we actually got to kind of have the base as a local application, and then we got stuck. So if you have more, you know, uh, help to, to to give us how to actually work with this. If you're interested, we will be very interested to hear. But that's what we where we kind of eh, I'll probably have better solutions like Kevin Holman's fragments or Silex MP Studio, I think. <laughs> so for now, um, 
we struggle with this and to make sure we make most value of the time, I would actually like to hand it over to Vincent to show a little bit more demo of the possibilities within Visual Studio instead as well. Okay, thank you, Jonas. Yes, uh, definitely. Um, let me just share my screen and uh, where are we? This one, and we'll go to this server here. So what I would like to do with you is I would like to show a demo where I extend the script that, um, or the script example that Jonas made in ChatGPT and create a management pack with a monitor for that. Now I've prepared a couple of things already uh, just for the sake of speed uh, because we have a bit of a challenge with time. Um, but what I would like to do first is create a basic management pack with a monitor and then later on add the script. So first what we'll do is we'll do some uh, basic plumbing. So we'll go to properties and create the management pack file. That's always a good idea. Uh, so we have the code here. And uh, what I'd like to do is also create a, um, a management pack with a monitor. And before that, we'll create a new item. And this is just for demo purposes. And this will be the uh, MP file. So in the MP file, when we open this, uh, I want to create a monitor. Now with the fragments I installed, uh, we can do that, or the snippets uh, which we installed, I can do that pretty quickly. I can uh, insert a snippet, use the MP dev toolkit, and we'll do a monitor, a script monitor, and it'll ask us uh, what we'd like to input. Since we're extending the example that Jonas did already, is we want to input the uh, folder path, and we also want to um, input the states we expect to get out. So if we uh, we want to put in the threshold for a critical state. Go ahead and click that, and then it'll generate all the XML for us here. All right, so first of all, we can do uh, a bit of replacing here. Uh, we can tab through it, but basically we do this. We add rec name, and we'll call the management pack uh, digital operations Windows Server, and then folder observer. So again, and the parameters uh, we'll take is folder path. So we have this one here. Folder path, and we have critical threshold, which we'll use here for the second parameter. Onto the whole thing. All right. So the timeout seconds for the script is uh, 300, so that's about five minutes. That's fine. We need a target class. And we'll kind of brute force it and we'll do it against uh, uh, the uh, Microsoft Windows computer class. Have that again. The available uh, availab uh, av availability state <laughs> uh, will be fine. And these uh, script output parameters, um, we'll just leave these because uh, we won't have time for that example. So pretty much uh, we have a whole management pack here, which we could use already. Uh, all I really want to do right now is separate it out a bit into uh, different management packs, so it's a bit more workable. Um, but the uh, basically idea is to put like uh, the data source module type, a probe action module type in uh, different files. So we'll do that here. I'll delete this one and I have these here in a demo file. I get these here. Oh. And we'll paste these. So now we have exactly the same what we created with the snippets, only in different files. As you can see. And we also have the script that John has made. But as we can see, it's just a normal function. And it has none of the uh, uh, kind of management pack or SCOM um, uh, API calls in it, which we need to have for SCOM to be able to use it. 
Now this is where ChatGPT comes in pretty handy because uh, we can start editing this script and you can already see that uh, Copilot is actually suggesting stuff already. But the first thing we want to do, and I have the calls, I have them ready already, so I can just uh, copy and paste them. We'll say uh, add the mom scripting API reference to the PowerShell script. So we'll see if it can do that. And immediately it suggests the code and I can just tab it and enter. And then it says, well, you also probably want to create a property bag. So we'll do that as well. And we'll, it'll suggest the next thing. So, hey, call the function and store the results in the property bag. And that's exactly what I'd like to do. So we'll call the function. We'll uh, do it as add value to the property bag. We'll kind of re do another return and then it says return the property bag to SCOM. Yes, we want to do that. So we'll tab that and then we'll actually press return. So for the script, uh, I think that's most of the parts. The Good only question th there, Vincent. The, yeah. You see the text, the folder size status as a value. Will it actually look at the script? Is that folder size status something no. that it, no, it's just yeah. randomly. Yes, it just randomly generated. I would need to fill in the correct parameters for that, but uh, no. that's kind of outside of the scope. I mean, no. there's there's a lot of little things you would still have to change, um, but I was just uh, hoping nobody was not would notice really. Uh -huh. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I know. I know. So uh, we'll continue there, but there is one thing we need to change for the um, management pack to work because since we um, created a monitor, a uh, two-state monitor. Uh, we need two states, but this one has three states because we have uh, healthy, which is the default state, and then warning and critical. So what I can do is I can ask ChatGPT to change the script for us, or sorry, Copilot. And let's see. We'll ask Copilot and say, hey, can you remove the warning clause from the script? So we'll submit that and it needs to think about it a little bit. Just a little longer. And usually it'll give us the answer. We'll check what it did. And uh, it's actually pretty intelligent because first of all, it would take away the warning threshold from the parameters, so the input parameters from the script. So uh, I like that. And then also here, the it will take away the else if clause for the warning statement. So that's exactly what I want. So I'll accept the answer. And then we can see it applies it everywhere and I'll save this file. OK, so uh, we have the script ready. There's only one uh, other thing we need to do, uh, which I saw before is I saw that we have a script, but it, the names don't really match because the get folder size PS1. Now I'm not sure where it all needs to be um, adjusted, so I'll ask Copilot again for this example. And here I'll ask. Can you change the XML to make use of the get folder size PS1 scripts? And there we go. And let me just check if I like the answer it's giving me. Uh, let's see what it did. It removed the folder observer PS1 for the script name and change it into get folder size PS1. Then it changed the include file content script folder observer PS1 and changed it to get folder size PS1. But oh, uh, here it left scripts in. So well, I like it enough. So what I'll do here is I'll edit this manually, still get the script path out and save this. Yeah, maybe it's so smart that it actually wants you to put it in a different folder, Vincent. Yes, I think I'm being a bit sloppy here and not <laughs> putting it in a folder. <laughs> so, all right, so I think uh, this should be uh, good enough for now. Let's see if it actually builds.
and lo and behold, it actually does something. Now that was pretty nice. Um, so I've tried a, a few more things. Um, and this is just for an example and uh, just to try things. And what I wanted to test was, hey, can I write like all monitors and stuff like that? So uh, what I. I'm going to do is create a co-pilot fragment and see if I can create a complete monitor out of it. So the first thing I try to do is uh, the logical thing to do, and I got it to work once, is add a XML comment because that's what we really want to do in the code. Um, so we can actually use it. And then basically you keep on waiting, 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 and nothing really seems to happen. Sometimes it does happen. Oh, and now time, it, it we're and, at, our, at our dry run before it didn't <laughs> work. So like, ah, it's going to fail. <laughs> yeah. So strange enough, uh, sometimes it will actually give you uh, a result and sometimes it won't. So I'll tab this here. And what you'll see here, it's pretty interesting because it'll actually know about the type ID we're using in the management pack in the other fragments. So that's a pretty cool thing. And it also call this uh, script unit monitor. So there are a couple of things which uh, which it'll do. But um, unfortunately, there are also uh, quite a few things uh, still wrong with it. So you can use it to kind of do things to add code, but um, and also to to kind of give you ideas. Uh, but what I think and um, what I use it for is to kind of like this colleague who gives you suggestions when you're stuck. All right, that was uh, that was the demo for uh, Copilot and the uh, management pack authoring tools. Yeah. So let's go back to the slides. Yeah, I think we have like five minutes left, so I'm just going to wrap things up in short. Uh, I think the, we, the use case, as I mentioned before, is really great to understand the needs, uh, what the customer wants, or if, if to try to convert something into a script. Uh, better instructions gives you better results. So train a little bit about the Kind of prompt engineering part and um, yeah. so you, you you give it the right instructions uh, it's great tools but it's a complement to your workflow and how you actually develop management packs there is you know other ways to actually understand these things you still need to know how to author these things and uh, we would still you know recommend using the silic tools or fragments from kevin holman or other snippets etc uh, and use this to kind of troubleshoot or learn or whatever. I'm not sure if they're going to improve it over time. Maybe Kevin can tell them to run more, you know, deep learning on his fragments to make it more consistent. Maybe we'll see. Uh, yeah, we we'll see a bright future when it comes to this, but you shouldn't kind of depend on it, I think, at least. So it's fun, though, to explore these new things. All right. You should give it a try. So uh, I'm not sure if there's any questions or anything, but we have a couple more minutes for I think it's time for Kevin Holman after this. But um, I'm not sure, Harold, uh, do you, have you seen any questions at the moment? Yeah, just uh, just going to take a quick look. And uh, for sure, if anyone have any questions for Vincent or Jonas, now is a, is a great time. We do have a couple minutes before Kevin gets started. So how about we do that? I don't see anything immediately. Uh, we have one who's asking oh. about the best resource for learning MP authoring. Um, what, what is this guy's name that was on the um, that created that video series on? Brian Wren. Yeah. yeah. Brian Wren, exactly. That series is really, really great tools. Uh, and of course, Kevin. Uh, and from your side, also Silect. I think that the uh, to start, Brian Run is really awesome. It goes through the things. You probably have to listen to it a couple of times because it's, you know, it's really in depth on some stuff. 